Hey YouTube, this is David B69, and I am extremely, extremely excited this morning as I am announcing that we're doing a countdown for baseball once again. But it's it's been four years, and the old series and stuff and everything has been kind of old, and I really haven't didn't add anything really to it and stuff. And I think there's like sixty some videos and stuff or something. But it's like, it's just not a complete of what I have. Um, and I, I really just wanted to do a little bit more. Um, since we crossed that 1,000 subscriber threshold, I was like really excited. And I really wanted to do something special. So we're going to have 2020 and we're going to do a countdown all the way until MLB The Show 20. So we're really excited. And I'm going to show you... Each and every game, minus one, because it's digital. So I apologize for the digital version. But I'll show you every single one. And I can't really show you MLB 20 because it's not out yet. I'm going to put on the screen um, in editing um, the list of all these games. Uh, so you'll be able to take a peek at it and see the release dates on the calendar and I'll try to put that text as well on the uh, in this in the talk notes below um, but before I all start all start please please hit subscribe please check that the bell for notifications and you will know exactly when these videos go up and running um, and you'll be able to watch them right away um, I'm really excited I'll be playing each and every single one of these games unless noted in this section and I, I will comment on each one of these um the only things that would stop me from doing a full video is if something like a game freezes or something happens during the recording but i will make a special note of that if that happens um i do plan on trying the best if it, like i mean something crashes in, in in the first game during the first couple innings I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to basically redo it and make sure I got a video for you guys. So I really do want, want to make these the best series possible. So let's, uh, let's start off. But like I said, we're going from 1985. And we have a game from like at least one game from every year, which is just amazing. And I'm like leaving out a few digital games, by the way. I mean, it's like there's more, I have more baseball games and that it's like, I'm just not even including in this. So just as an FYI. So the first off on our list was released in 1985 on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And that is baseball for the NES. Um, super, super excited. I love baseball and I hope you too do too. Um, but we're going to start off here. Now, on the old series, I think I started off with Bases Loaded 3. We're starting off with baseball. So we're going, like, further back. And it's going to be awesome. So, baseball. Next up is a game we did have on there. RBI Baseball. Um, not my favorite series. I I'm not going to I'm not gonna lie. But I have it. I'm going to play it. And you'll basically be able to enjoy and laugh at my patheticness as I play this game. Um, I mean, I'll play it and I might do well, I might not do well. So, who knows? Well, we'll see what happens. Oh, by the way, leave in the notes if there's a certain game or a certain stadium that you want to see in these series. Please, you got to let me know um, and I will do my best that it's I and I'll read the comments. I'm not starting to read the record the series probably for another week or two. Um, so you have plenty of time to let me know um, what you feel, what you what what kind of what teams you want to see, um, what stadium you might want to see, and just like let me know. And uh, obviously the stadiums and stuff are for, for the newer games, uh, but we'll go over that. Um, so anyway. That's RBI Baseball. Next up 
in this game, I think release when the bases loaded release in 1987. So bases loaded. And I, I and I got some like really good copies of these games. I'm like for, for the most part, it's like almost every single one of these games is like in really good condition. So I'm like really happy about it. Um, and here is the next one, Bases Loaded, Season 2. Well, second season, sorry. And that was released in 1988. I just recently got this. I am so excited. I have not played this game yet. Um, I might have played this... I shouldn't say I have not played it before. I used to go to my friend's house. I, I grew up with a Commodore 64... And my first system at home was a Genesis after Pong and Atari 2600. But it's like I went to a friend's house and he had the NES and we used to play Bases Loaded um, back like for hours. And it's like and that's what we spent all of our time doing. So that was the game. That was the game of choice back then. Next up on the list. I have not played this one yet, um, but I am looking forward to it. It is Bad News Baseball. Um, I'm really curious about this one. Um, just looking forward to playing this. So, it looks really cool. Um, it has rabbits. It has a rabbit umpire and goofy looking people. So... All right, we'll see what that is. I have no idea what that game is, the feeling of the game, or how it runs, or anything. So, we will see. Next up is a game I really, really like, um, made by Culture Brain. Um, it's called Baseball Simulator 1.000. Um, and it's just really, it's it's a really good game. Um it's like I like it's strong thing and it talks about it's a basically shows some statistics and it's just really a nice game. I like this game a lot. And that's Baseball Simulator to uh, 1.000. Next up is some people's favorite games, um, and it's like one of the some of their favorite series. Um, it's a it's a great it's a good series to me. It's called Baseball Stars. Um, I think this is a really strong one. Um, the fun part about this is we're going to be able to go through and you'll be able to see the little differences and nuances with each one of these games. And it's just fascinating. And a lot of the stuff that I did in the past when I was doing the review you know, of baseball and stuff, going through all this, it was like I only went through authentic, regular baseball games. I didn't really go for the goofy ones. So, it's like this time, we're including everything. We're including more of the arcade and the and the simulation types. And I, it's, it's going to be fun. Um, next up is Bases Loaded 3 by Ryan, with Ryan Sandberg. That's what it says, right? Uh, Ryan Sandberg plays Bases Loaded 3. Um... So no, you don't get to have Ryan Sandberg come to your house and play Bases Loaded 3 with you. You just... That's why I'm really goofy. It's like really confusing of a title, but it, it's a good game. I really... I've, like I said, I always, I've always enjoyed all the entire Bases Loaded series, so... It's like there's never any doubt in that stuff. Um, next game in our series will be Bo Jackson Baseball. Um, I made by Data East. I don't remember actually playing this. I might have played it. I don't remember. Um, I've had this game for quite a long time. So I am not 100% sure. But we'll experience this one. And uh, we'll... We'll see together whether it uh, how it holds up. Next up, this is actually kind of cool. Um, I I very rarely have the full version of games. Um, RBI Baseball Two 
and I have the box and it's in like decent condition um I it's I'm really like kind of happy it's a little faded on the cover but in the back on the back and stuff it's not too bad a little damage on the bottom corner there but in the overall picture it's really just not too bad so I and it's it's a good it's a good game um like I said, RBI is not my favorite series in the world, but it, it's like it is a really it's a good treat and everything to have, like a full version of a game. So that is RBI Baseball Two. Next up is another game and everything that I didn't have until recently. Um, they're actually a really hard game to get. Is Bases Loaded Four? Bases Loaded 4 is a really strong game. I love this game. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. It's very strong. It's probably like the most polished of the game. The funny thing on there, it's like, and you'll see this over the time, is the graphics on the NES games. Now this could be just me. Um, is they were able to put video effects chips on the actual carts so it's not like today where all the video effects and stuff are in the hardware some of the video updates were actually done on the cartridge so when it was like displaying the video the only all the system does was push out what the cartridge told you to do and so you were able to like literally upgrade your graphics as you went along um which was amazing tech back then and kind of a shame that they can't continue to like, make cartridges and do that kind of thing today. But I guess it just gets kind of expensive after a while. But uh, anyway, next up on the NES is Roger Clemens MVP Baseball. Um, I don't remember much about this game, but we'll, we'll explore it together. Um, and like I said... It's like whatever you guys want to see, what teams you want to see, all that stuff. Just let me know. A lot of these games, especially back in, in this era, have cities. Um, they don't have actual team names. Um, can't recall which one's the first one to actually have the actual MLB license. But it's like we're, we're still a ways away from getting to that era. So... But next up, we're going to go a little bit next gen again now. it's We're going to the next level here. And and I apologize, we're having a alert in our area for a snow squall that is coming through. So I apologize that uh, the emergency alert system is going off. But uh, the next game on our list is a game called Extra Innings. And look at that upper right hand corner of the game. It says Sony! It's so crazy. Sony used to develop games on the uh, on the Super Nintendo. It was just it was just wild. It was a different era, different time. Um, so it's like really cool. So that was extra innings. And we, we just showed off the uh, Roger Clemens MVP baseball. Yeah, here it is again, this time on the Super Nintendo. Now, what the interesting here is what differences are in the NES version to this version. Um, everything I read, the game came out the exact same year. Roger Clemens baseball and MVP baseball. They came out the exact same year. So what differences are between the two, if any. Should be interesting to see. Um, looking forward to playing that and, and basically seeing what, what is the differences. Um, next up, told you that I love the NES version. Well, here is the Super Baseball Simulator 1.000. So I am looking forward to playing this. I uh, love this game. Um, it's just a very, very strong game. So, I enjoy this one as well. 
Next up after that is probably the crappiest cartridge that I own. And it's kind of embarrassing. It's like a Blockbuster video cartridge. And I mean, you could just see the old Blockbuster video tabs and stuff. And it's like, I need to probably work on cleaning this up a little bit. And there's a marker on the front of it. But it's uh, basically Ryan Sandberg's plays Super Bases Loaded. So, um, I'm going to work on cleaning this cartridge up at some point. Um, I definitely want to have it cleaner. No, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. And I might, I might at one point get a new copy of that game. Um, cause I don't, I don't like a, I don't like a copy looking like that. It's just so blah to me. So that's super bases loaded. Next up, since we're going super Nintendo, there was a competitor. Sega, and they had RBI Baseball 3 on the Genesis. Now, Genesis is like one of my favorite systems of all time. Um, so, playing this game on the Genesis is favorable to me. Really enjoy that system. So, um... Next up is we're going, I would use, I always used to say, to the future, but no, it's, it's now. I, I, but it's like, my problem is, is I don't remember having robots in, on the baseball field now, but, um, yeah. So this was made by Electronic Arts, the same people that made all the other great baseball games. It's like, this is like. It's so cool, and it's uh, like we played. I played this in the arcade probably before anything else, and, and it was a tremendous game. It's like a lot of fun. It's like really cool, and it's like, and it's like I show you and everything. It's like I got the manual, so it's like if I have any questions on this game or want to review it before starting to play, I'll be able to do it. So it's like really cool. Um, I think there's even a there's even a poster I think in here. I'm sorry, it is. Um. Yeah, yeah. This is a it's an electronic arts poster. And it had like all the games and stuff from back in the day. Here, I'll show that off a little bit. So, yeah, it's pretty wild. So that is Super Baseball 2020. Sorry to uh, go a little off put there. If I see stuff, I like to talk about it. Um, next up is Sports Talk Baseball. Sports Talk Baseball. It was a Sega property. Um, and this is one of those cool things that they were able to do. They were able to incorporate a sound chip. And when you incorporated the sound chip, it just made everything a little bit better. And if you see there, um, uh, where is it? It should be, yeah, it's right down the, in the title. It has the MLB PA, that's the Players Association license. Um, so they're actually able to have the actual players and they'll, like, they're actually during the play by play, they'll actually talk about the, their names and they'll bring that stuff up. The great part is it, uh, I think it has. Yeah, it's like 500 pro players based on the 1991 stats. I think it was back then. There was only like 26 teams, and it was just really cool. So, had a sports talk baseball on the Genesis. Next up. 
got Cal Ripken Jr. baseball on the Super Nintendo. Um, I don't remember much about this game. Made by Mindscape. Mindscape made some interesting games. Um, trying to remember some of their games that they made. I swear they made some. I think they made some basketball game or something and everything that I really enjoyed or a fighting game. Um, but that's just getting off the beaten path. Anyway, next up after that we'll be playing Hardball Three. Hardball 3 was one of my all-time, all-time favorite games. Um, now, the, I never played it on the Super Nintendo. I didn't have the Super Nintendo until, like, probably, like, the, nine, the late 90s. Um, when I was going back and getting some old retro stuff and playing some old retro stuff. So, and I was back, <laughs> it was back in the late 90s. I wanted to play stuff in the early 90s. So, but it's like I had this, I believe I had this on the, it would have been the Commodore 64 back then. So, and it's like they used to have the, on those things, they used to have the spinning wheels and all that stuff. So, yeah, it was just nuts. You used to have to do that and unlock the game every time you wanted to play it. Um... And next up, on the Super Nintendo, Nolan Ryan Baseball. So, it's very interesting. It's like the next version of Nolan Ryan's Baseball. We had the Nolan Ryan Baseball, didn't we? Or no, we, just, we had Roger Clemens that had the two baseball games. So this is Nolan Ryan's turn. Um, I don't remember much about this game. It might be good. We'll play it. We'll see what happens. Um, made by Romstar, which I'm not even familiar with them. So I'm not even sure who, who they are, but maybe you do. You can leave me a comment. Um, I always like talking about that stuff, so it's interesting. Um, next up. is Super Bases Loaded 2. Um, I think this is the end of the series. I don't think they made any after this. Um, this is a non-licensed game. I mean, they don't. it doesn't have the MLB, PA, or any licenses. So, um, now Helico made other games. I think I have a Japanese version of a game and that's in our list, and I think it was made by them. Um, they made a lot of great games, um, and Super Baseball, Bases Loaded is, like, one of my favorite series of all time, so, um, but I've already said that. Next up is made by, a game made by Namco, it's called Super Batter Up. Now, it has the MLBPA license, which is cool, um, always like that. But it's like a really, really strong game. And um, I think this is pretty decent. I really, I, I, I thought, I think I remember it as a good game. So we'll play it. We'll see what's going on. Now that's like, just like to let you know, it's like that, that game probably won't even get released until halfway through the month of February. So it's like, because I'm going to be doing the release schedule plan is two videos per day um so you're going to see a lot of content um you're not going to see it all at once you're just going to see it two a day um and you realize that it's going to with all the editing and other things that got to take place on my end it's it basically it's like two doing two videos a day is time time consuming and it takes time so i hope everybody appreciates the videos but that was super batter up. Next, we're going backwards. And it's like, I, I really didn't 
I just don't didn't understand why this order was what the order was. Um, I probably should have put this at the beginning because it was 1992, and um, I could have put this between. But this is Baseball Stars 2. So it will actually be kind of interesting to see what the graphical differences and going back to the NES and seeing what we see differently between the between the genres and it like if it's really truly taking a step back or like how much differences the new systems made. So that's going to be interesting. Next up is RBI Baseball 4. Is that 4? Yeah. Yeah, RBA Baseball 4. Um, this is obviously on the Genesis. And you can see they have the MLB player license now. And... We'll see how good this game is and stuff for the for the Sega Genesis. Now that they actually have the Players Association, the interesting part here is, according to the cover, it has real Pro Bowl players, 1991 player stats, all 26 pro teams, each with the home their own home stadium, and the division champs from 1983 through 91. Which is very interesting because you could play some of these old teams against the current teams, which is like really cool. I wish they went deeper than just eight years, but it's probably a memory issue and other issues that I wouldn't know about. So, next up is probably like one of my favorite favorites of the entire thing. It was like I, it's like I was flipping out when I when I first played this. Um, Tony La Russa Baseball. Um, again, this is made by EA. So they basically changed... They basically changed themselves and stuff, and they went to Tony La Russa Baseball. Um, and it's just... It was incredible. Like, how much they had in this game. I mean, they, like, went through the trouble of showing it's like hey look how like breakdown we do frame by frame showing the graphics of how we're doing and doing shit simulating these pitchers motion and throwing motions and it's like the runners running and it was just like really cool tech back then and the cool part up here is not only did they have the manual and stuff but they have player cards. I mean, so like, you want to look at the Yankees. This was Yankees playing card from, from that year. Um, it's just totally interesting. Um, so it's like, I have all these player cards and, and but it's like, like I said, it's just for players association only. Um, this is Montreal's I mean, it's just interesting. And it's like, uh, in the back it has the picture information. It's just, I, I I just always, I like always thought it was like really cool. And they try to, even they even try to educate you. Um, Basically giving you the some of the abbreviations and how that stuff worked. I mean, it's just, it was like really cool. So, just basically wanted to share that. Thought that was kind of neat. Probably the only thing I don't enjoy in everything is Put, when they put a pre-owned sticker, they put the pre-owned sticker on the manual, and they put the pre-owned sticker on the actual card itself, which didn't need to be there. Um, I'm going to try to probably remove that at some point, but I don't want to tear the label either. 
but I do have a full copy of this game, which is like really awesome. Um, next up is another one of my favorite series. Um, now there's now they have 28, 28 teams. World Series Baseball on Sega Genesis. And this was made by Sega. Um, this is what be eventually becomes 2K. Um, like, it was like Sega Sports and it had all this stuff. And it was just like really, really cool. And this had the... It said MLB and and the Players Association, which made it really nice. Um, after that, and I apologize. It's like I didn't open that game up and go through that one, but I had the manual and all that stuff for this one as well. Um, next game is... ESPN Baseball Tonight. Um, it's a good game. Made by Sony. Um, another game made by Sony, which, but this time it's on Sega system. Um, and basically at the time when they did the expansions. and um, It was just kind of cool because they tried to make it more of a television presentation and was showing it from there. Um, so it was just kind of interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was always kind of interesting. And this was the next version of Tony LaRusso Baseball. Tony LaRusso Baseball 95. Of course, it doesn't have the word Tony in it, but I put that in there. Um, this is by EA Sports. Again, it only had the Players Association. So, for some reason, it, like, didn't have, they couldn't get the, they couldn't get the Major League Baseball to agree to do it, but they could get the Players Association, because I guess the players wanted the extra income, but they couldn't convince the team to. So, but, uh, yeah, this was, like, this is a really solid game. Um, they didn't have any, they didn't do any team cards or anything. They pretty much, I think this is pretty much a poster. What they did, um, they kind of, like, put stats and stuff on that. And it's like, that's just part of the poster. And on the other side... It was like kind of like a helpful guide of how to go around and play the game. So, it's like useful stuff, but it's just sort of interesting. Because, I mean, today you just don't get anything. I mean, you just basically get, get the game and you just figure it out. But back then... You had all these manuals walking you through every little step of every little thing. Next game up is MLB PA Baseball. Um, not exactly what sure happened here. Um, I'm only guessing that they couldn't make a contract agreement with Tony La Russa. Um, so they basically created their own version of this so this is my only guess I really don't have any other good reason for it matter of fact this is I might have done this in the wrong order because this says authentic 93 stats but then that was Tony Lewis at 95 what year stats was that one Yeah, this is 94, ro okay, this is 94 rosters, and so this is, I mean, both these both games and everything, it seemed like they were both made at the same year, which is really confusing, so, I mean, it doesn't really completely shock me, 
Um, because in 1994, there was the entire strike, and baseball was kind of like going in a mess at that point. So, but uh, next game up is RBI Baseball 94. And again, this has the Players Association. And graphically, you can see it's improved a little bit here um, from these images. But we will see. We'll play the game and see what see see how it improved. So that is RBI Baseball '94. Next up is Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. Um, it's on the Super Nintendo. Oh, did they just have... I think they had the teams. I think they had Major League Baseball teams. I'm not sure about the Players Association, though. Because if I remember correctly, I think they only had Ken Griffey Jr. and... They threw in a bunch of names. Hey, they weren't lying. It's snowing like the Dickens outside. Well, guess, guess they weren't fibbing. That is a snow squall. Um, let's see here. So that was that. And again, this is the exact same pretty much game and everything. MLBPA. Baseball. I'm sort of wondering if they were just because Tony Russo was only on the Sega Genesis and never on the Super Nintendo. I sort of wonder if it was an exclusive for just Genesis only, so they wanted to get out of that. Um, it's just speculation. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, next up is Relief Pitcher. Um, I've seen videos of this game. I have not actually played it, so I actually look. I'm like really looking forward to playing this. Um, so it's actually kind of interesting. And then after that, we will play Sporting News Baseball. Sporting News Baseball should be an interesting game. Um, has has the Players Association. So again, another game with the Players Association only. So it's like back in the early 90s, it's been pretty much a lot of what you could see. And then next up is Frank Thomas, Big Hurt Baseball. And this is the kind of thing you've seen back in the days, back in the early 90s. You would see... And this is the with MLB PA sponsorship. This is made by Acclaim. You'll see all these games and stuff made by these different players, and it's just it was extremely interesting because like they were like made by different companies, and it's like they had their own take on it, and it's like you see all these different franchises that were out there trying to take a hold, and they couldn't do it. It's like a lot of these companies and stuff basically got knocked apart by the uh, by some of these powerhouses. Next up, it has the Players Association logo right on it, is Hardball 95 on the Genesis. Um, made by Accolade. Um... Like, really, really cool. Um, I have not actually played this, but I'm, like, really excited to play this. Um, it's, it's like I always crack up sometimes just seeing this different style of some of the cartridges were, like, slightly different on the Genesis. Like... Every single Super Nintendo cartridge that you have was like the same exact cartridge. It's like they had to do it in such a certain way, and it had to be that way. Um, so it's just interesting to me when you see like a different version. 
Next up is Triple Play 96. So it's no longer the MLB PA game. It is Triple Play. So they basically must have like sat around and said, hey, we need to come up with a cool name. And they basically came up with Triple Play 96. So can't argue. I, it's like I like the I like the name Triple Play. It's like just really cool. Um, and you can see graphically. I it's like I still feel that this is this is a really strong game, and it's like and it's like we're coming close to the end of the era. Um, so like the fact that they're like pushing the graphics so much back then. It was just really, really cool. And the very next game was Triple Play Baseball. Um, I believe I'm doing these in the correct order. I looked online. Um, this one says 95 stats. Um, it's like right on the back cover here. And this says updated for the 96 season. So, not sure completely what the differences are, um, but we can explore it. Um, I still think it might might be the same exact game. It it could just be the exact same game, and they just relabeled it, calling it the gold version. Not really sure. Um, but one of the things it has in there is called the Pro Mode, the Ultimate Challenge. Um, and they basically are claiming to have a new pitching control interface. So, we'll see. Like I said, we'll go through, we'll play this game, we'll play, we're going to play every single game. Um, and I'm going to plan, my plan is to go through every menu and every little nuance and stuff. And that was the last game on the Genesis, by the way. Um, next one is the last game that we're going to see on the Super Nintendo which is Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run. Um, this is like, a, a, it's a very good arcade game. Um, I don't know anybody that does not like the Ken Griffey baseball series. I'm not a huge fan, but I understand people that do enjoy it. Um, and it's because it's very arcadey. It's like a lot of fun. You're generally high scoring games. Um, and it's like, it's goofy and cool at the same time. So we'll have fun with it. We'll play and we'll go from there. And now we're going to go to the next generation here. We're in 96. And we have Nintendo 64. And it's bottom of the ninth. Um, you're wondering what these stickers are. I have these plastic cases that I bought a long time ago. And I'd like basically I relabel them. Um, so that I can easily fold them to the side. And have them calculated and keep them flat. And I'll be able to find what game I want to play. And it's an easy storage solution for me. And I didn't like spending money and on labels that I didn't have to buy. So... Just use some extra old work labels and just print them up on my printer. Made it nice and simple. Next game is the exact same game but on a different system. And this is the full copy and it has the MLB Players Association license made by Konami. Bottom of the ninth. Same exact game. It's so exciting. Um, but it's just like... This one you can like you'll be able to see the graphical improvements. Um, now the interesting part: this game was made at the exact same time um, for two different consoles. Saturn, in case you don't remember, is a 32-bit console, and the Nintendo is a 64-bit console. So technically, I would expect the Nintendo one should look better. So, would that be true? We will find out. We're going to play and we're going to see these actual games back to back. 
Next game is like from my favorite series, World Series Baseball 2 on the Saturn. Tremendous game. Um, I probably played this version, this game, so many times and for so long. It's like, it's like after the... I mean, I remember the Ind Indians playing the, I think it was the Braves in the World Series, and I spent so much time playing this game, and it's like, I, I would play nothing else on my Saturn back in the day. It was just crazy. Now, this is crazy, too. I have this game, and it's still sealed. It's World Series Baseball 98. Now, I did play this before, um, but I had it only on a loose disc. Um, this is actually a new sealed copy. Um, and it's just really cool. Um, I sold away the, uh, the loose copy discs. Um, and I plan on opening this game for the use of this. Um, bought it at a thrift store. It was sealed, so should be a good game. So I'm looking forward to playing it. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Next up, another one of my. It's like I keep on saying my favorite, my favorite, my favorite, my favorite. Um, but this is a, one of my one another one of my favorite series is All Star Baseball '99. I love the All-Star Baseball Series. Now, my main affliction to the All-Star Baseball Series is actually not on the Nintendo 64. It's actually on the GameCube. Um, but um, I, I got these games on the Nintendo 64 because of my love for the game on the GameCube. Um, I actually haven't played these yet, but I can only imagine they're like somewhat good and somewhat fun to play because I love them on the GameCube so much. Um, next up, we're going back to Ken Griffey, Major League Baseball with Ken Griffey Jr. So, we're back to Ken Griffey, so we can't be wrong with that. Um, it should be a fun, it should be fun. Like I said, Ken Griffey, very arcadey. That's one thing I remember about the series from Ken Griffey Jr., He's, he's very, it's a very arcadey game. So there's nothing wrong with it. Just very arcadey. Next up. We're going to a different system altogether. Going to the PS1. We got Triple Play 99. Um, now, to me, I, I like this. I like the... Uh, the update and the graphics and stuff. The you know, only problem I actually had with the way they when they originally were doing this on the PlayStation is it was like really cool. I just felt they zoomed in too much and it was too blocky. If they kept it zoomed out a little bit and just showed the smoothness, I think the overall game would be better. Um, and they would have been better served if they continued to do it that way. But that's me nitpicking. Um, it's really just not that big of a deal in the end. But I'm talking, so I get to express my point of view. If you have a point of view, please share it. Um, I like to conversate, and if you mess, if you tech, if you put a message below in the comments, I will do my best to comment back. Um, I like I like getting other people's viewpoints. Next up is All Star Baseball 2000 on the Nintendo 64. Again, I already already talked about um, my knowledge of these games on the Nintendo 64, and I look forward to playing it. And this is another game that has the Players Association and the NMLB license, so. It's a it's pretty much a complete series there. Next up is we're getting roided up. 
with Triple Play 2000 with Sammy Sosha on the cover. Um, looks like we're talking steroid error, so <laughs> expect a lot of fly balls. Um, but it's like I remember Triple Play 2000. It was a solid game. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we should have some fun with this one. So. And, and the next game on the Nintendo 64, this is the last Nintendo 64 game I have this baseball. Um, All-Star Baseball 2001 on the Nintendo 64 in a red cartridge. Uh, why a red cartridge? Not really sure. The other ones are gray. For some reason, this one went red. Um, claim Sports trying to do something. I have no idea what was their point of doing it in this manner. But that's what they did. Um, next up is on the PS1. This was made by 3DO, and it has Sammy Sosha, because it's Sammy Sosha High Heat Baseball. Um, uh, just, like, very interesting. It's like it had a the thick jewel case. I believe. Yeah, it's like had, had some extra material and a strategy guide, like, included in the game. Made by 3DO, so it's like with a thicker manual. That's pretty much what they had to do. Um, and like I said, I'm trying to show these cases. If I go too quick, please just pause the game I and mean, pause the video, and you should be able to you should be able to read this. I'm trying to keep it as steady as possible. Um, if you need to see other things or want to see other things, let me know in the comments below. Um, next up, and this is an sealed copy that I bought years and years and years ago um, which are very interesting triple play 2001 on the PlayStation part of me doesn't want to uh, open and break the seal on this kind of stuff because I mean it's like this game is like 20 years old um, but it's could be time, and it's like just the, the overall value of it really doesn't change too much and stuff from new to now, but this is the back. Like I said, it's, it's like they, they've slightly gotten rid of some of the blockiness that they had in the, in the, in like 99. So they did some improvements. Um, next up, we're going Dreamcast, and I have another new copy. It's new, it's sealed. It's World Series Baseball 2K1 on the Dreamcast. Um, now this is like really, really good. It was really, really smooth. Again, I had a loose, I had a loose disc version that I used to play before, um, so this is like so much better um, that I actually have the pole version. So I do plan on opening it, and and we'll play it and everything on this series. So it's just like really cool, it's really exciting. And that was um, that was World Series Two K One. Next up, 
we're going to the next generation. And I have another sealed copy. All-Star Baseball 2002 on the GameCube. Now this is the, these are the games that I like remember. I mean, this is just it was like so cool. Uh, it's like it was a great game, um, a lot of fun, and it's like this is the first one and everything. It has Derek Jeter in the cover, but it's like after this, it's like it's like it's featuring Derek Jeter, and it's like because it's like they wanted to keep him as their spokesmodel um, because it's like it made the game sell better because you have like a famous like and really good New York Yankee on the cover. So they were like, yeah, we're just going to bow down and do whatever it can to keep that going. Next up, we have Triple Play Baseball. On the PlayStation. Um, played to death out of Triple Play Baseball. It's a really, really strong baseball game. Got zombies on the cover, and like this was like this was like really cool. Had all thirty, had all thirty teams and stadiums, and it's like just a really strong game. So that was triple play baseball. Next up. We have back to the Dreamcast. We go. We have another sealed version. Um, World Series Baseball 2K2. I mean. Just it's like really cool. And it's like, it's like the 2K2 and everything is probably the, the, like one of their better better versions. It's like, probably, well, it's the best version on the Dreamcast because it was like the biggest. That's the most upgrades they did, and that was the last game on the of the Dreamcast that we had. Next up, another great game. All-Star Baseball 2003, and like I said, it's featuring, <laughs> featuring Derek Jeter. Um, so they're pretty much bowing down and saying, hey, we got, we got these guy, this guy and everything on our cover, let's keep him happy, and we'll just say it's featuring you, and it will make our game sales go up. But it claims a, a wonderful job on the GameCube with this game. Um, I still think to this day, if GameCube had better sales overall, it's a claim could could have won um, with that series as the best baseball series. It's just my personal opinion, um, but that is what that is. Next up is Home Run King. I think that's, no, that's not, um, who is that on the Astros? I don't even remember. Is that Biggio? I'm trying to figure out, it's like, is that Biggio? I don't, don't recall. Um, but it's interesting. I've never played this game, so we'll we'll see how that how how everything goes. But I've never played Home Run King, so it's made by Sega. It's kind of like a kind of like a 2K series. So we'll we'll see how that one goes. Um, next up, we're going Xbox. We got Triple Play 2002 on the Xbox. Um, again, just like the PlayStation 1, 
you can see that the graphics are now stepping up a little bit even more on the Xbox. Um, so it's just nice, fancier, and smoother graphics. And we're going to just continue. We're just continuing that trend as we go. Next up is World Series Baseball on the Xbox. And, um, yeah. I realize that this sticker is on this game, and I hate stickers on my games. I'll have to clean it up later. I picked this up used, and it basically has a thing on the back, so I apologize. What I can do, what I can do is. Scroll that down a little bit so you can actually see what it says on the back. I generally, to the most part, and everything don't care. It's like I, I always like the discs. You can see the nice discs that they make. They go through a lot of work on those things, and they generally are hidden most of their life cycle. Um, that was World Series Baseball. On the Xbox. And next up. We got All-Star Baseball 2004. And you can see right there it says number one selling baseball franchise. I, it's like it's a bold statement to say that. But I'm sure... If Anybody can make any statement, but in my opinion, this was an incredible game. They had over 50 playable teams. Um, there was a lot of stuff that you had to unlock to do further things in this game, um, to unlock the other the uh, teams and such. So it was like really, really cool, and it just and it included a hundred over 110 uh, retired legends. Um, and had Negro Leagues from the Negro, Major League Baseball and Negro Leagues, including Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Cal Ripken, June, Cal Ripken, Satchel Page, Josh Gibson, and Buck O'Neill. So, I think Schmitty was in the game. So, I don't know. It was a good game. So that was All-Star Baseball 2004. Next up. is Inside Pitch 2003 on the Xbox. Now why do I have a 2004 before that? It was just the way the All-Star Baseball labeled the, the games in those years. Um, All-Star was kind of weird and did things a little backwards. Um, they always had their, it was always the year advanced. So. But I really enjoyed Inside Pitch 2003. It's a great game. Um, and I think you'll see that when, you, when I play it, that it's like a really solid baseball game. And I, I wish they continued making the baseball games. Speaking of sadness and moving forward, MV Baseball, MVP Baseball 2004. They dropped the triple play moniker and they went with MVP. In my opinion, it's that was the curse for them. Um, and it's like, just like what, it's like the other thing did the year before. They decide, hey, we're the number one, uh, number one of all. Um, so it's like, Like they had to do things and like do a step up in the other franchises, which is just kind of funny and a little petty, but just funny. Um, they had the triple A and double A teams in this game as well. 
so it was like really cool. Next up is All Star Baseball 2005. Featuring Derek Jeter, in case you didn't know. Um, this one's on the Xbox. Um, it's a good game on the Xbox, my opinion, and I'd like to hear other people's opinions. I thought the GameCube version was a little stronger, um, but... We can argue and discuss in the comments. I I definitely feel that the GameCube versions were a little bit better. Um, if you felt differently, let me know. Next up, we're actually leaving the genre of Major League Baseball because we wanted to go a little goofy and we're gonna go Mario Superstar Baseball. Um, we're just gonna have fun, play one like one baseball game in the like in the Mario world um I, I just it's it's a game that makes me makes you laugh um and makes you really enjoy baseball um and there's nothing wrong with that it, it's just it's a cool baseball game so it's like really really cool uh, and that's I, I I find no problem with being able to laugh and kind of enjoying it. Next up, MVP Baseball 2005. Um, this was the last of the series that EA's made. Um, they stopped making games after 2005. In fact, all, all other, pretty much all others are basically Unless they made it for the individual console, I think. Um, it was just kind of one of those exclu exclusivity licenses. The Curse of 2005 pretty much was added, and it wasn't. It wasn't just. It wasn't exclusive. Exclusive. It was just. It was really weird. I don't. I don't know why. Why it happened. I can't remember. But they had all this like cool new stuff, and you can go through the miners and build yourself up, and a spring training mode, and I, it was just it was ahead of its time. And you can even create a ballpark in the game, so it was definitely ahead of its time, and it was like a really really cool game. Next up. is MLB Baseball 2K5. This is the World Series Edition. Um, not sure if there was a regular version. Um, but you can see the special features. One of them says a custom MLB DVD. Um, it's exclusive MLB produced DVD highlighting World Series moments you can play in game. Um, now, it comes with its own DVD, so I don't remember it, but I've owned this game since its launch, but I don't remember so. One of the things I've banged my head like once or twice too much of times and stuff over years, so um, certain things I don't remember. Next up is MVP Baseball 2005. Um, it's the exact same, pretty much back cover on the Xbox. Let's see here. Um, And we got next up. It's the one that started it for Sony, and will be the show six. I mean, it's like really cool. They had new uh, new robbery mode, 
I don't know why they say new robbery mode and everything. They didn't have any. They didn't have a version before, so. I don't understand why, why they're using the words new. Um, why don't they just say instead of new, just say introducing these new modes? Um, I don't know why they would word it that way, but it is what it is. Um, I think that the game was decent on the PS2, but obviously PS3 and PS4 is where where it really built itself up. Next up, another sealed copy of a game. Um, this is on the GameCube, and will be 2K6. You're saying to yourself, why do you have a sealed copy on the GameCube of MLB 2K6? That makes absolutely zero sense. Well, because I have it on the Xbox, I have the exact same game on the Xbox, and it's basically the whole point of having the new copy on the GameCube is so we can do a comparison. And we can see what the differences are between the two games. I mean, we might be seeing stuff, we might not see stuff, but it's interesting just to look at it and be able to have some kind of intelligent conversation about it. Speaking of intelligent conversations about it, we have three versions! Because we just couldn't have two, we had to have three! Um, so it's like, well, we have three versions of the same exact game, the same exact year. It should be very, very interesting to go through and see all of that. Um, so for 2K6, we're going insane with that. Um, so you have that to look forward to. Next up. It's like another goofy game, but it's like, seriously, I wish they made this, like, all the time for all the consoles. MLB Power Pros. Um, it is so deep of a game, and you just do so much little things, and it's just, it's a really strong game for back in the day. And... It's just a shame that they have all these mini models and different things, but they didn't like they didn't continue it. And it's just, I mean, I know I think there is a next version of it, but I don't have it. Um, but I think it's on the I think they well I know they make it still in Japan, but that is what that is. Anyway, so to continue here. I pretty much have what's here on the back wall here and everything to go through. Um, and we will go through that real quickly because I think this video is getting a little long. Um, this one is MLB 2K7. You can't see the 2K7 because it has the pre-owned sticker because I bought this used a while back. Um, from our wonderful friends at GameStop um, for 99 cents. Well, it was 89 cents actually, but it's it's just it's that that version anyway. Um, next up, and will be the show. And I should have back. Now here here's an interesting one. This one's actually from Japan. This is, uh, has the J Japanese Baseball League, and it's called Professional Baseball Spirits 4 from Konami. Um, very strong game. Unfortunately, the, like, over time and everything, I don't even know what ha the heck happened here. It must have fell and everything, and the case cracked. I'll have to get a new case for this game. I don't know why that beat so badly. I have to do something about that one. Anyway, 
Um, next up is MLB 08 Show. Featuring Ryan Howard, which which makes the game like super better. And it's the greatest part in everything is we need to get... It's like I was thinking and as soon as they put uh, Harper on the cover of MLB The Show, I, like, we're, I'm like, we're going to win the World Series. It's like we had Howard on the on the cover and we won the World Series. So, anyways, um, next up is we're going back to Mario and we're on the Wii this time with Mario Super Sluggers on the Wii. So, again, more goofiness, more fun. Then we have Major League Baseball 2K9. K9 is a decent, decent of the series. And you got, and will be the show 09. Really, not much as like really to discuss on these. I mean, we can discuss them while I'm playing the game. Um, there'll be lots of things to talk about back, back for that. Um, this one's probably going to be the shortest video. Uh, just. To show a little bit off of what it does um, but I'm not going to go extremely long with this because it's pretty boring because it's like pretty much statistical based and I don't know how many people actually have an interest in seeing how this game plays and stuff um, again if you want to just shoot me a message let me know what you'd like to see in it um, like, I'll be glad to talk about the game and, and show off whatever people want to see. Um, and we got MLB 10 the show. And it's like, at this point, this is, it's like Sony basically had this game so down and, and did everything so right. And, and we got MLB 2K11. Again, it's like, I really love the 2K series. The only problem with the 2K series was it was extremely arcadey. When you have a very arcadey series and you have a very simulation to the life, as a baseball fan, I'm a stat guy and I want to try to have everything match up statistically and that's what I'm going to look at. Now for some people, they just might want to just play on the couch and hit home runs back and forth all day long. But it's not what I was into with my franchises and seeing stats and stuff, so MLB was the franchise for me. Next up will be MLB 11 The Show. Then we will have MLB 2K12. Um, this was a dual disc. So I'm just showing you the side that is just the baseball. And then we have the exact same game on the Wii. So we can compare the 360 version with the Wii version. And this is a new copy on the Wii. So, this is another sealed version. Um, this one on the Wii. Speaking of comparisons, we have the PS3 version of MLB 2K13. And that was just one of those combos again. And we have the 360 version. Here with tears here, you can see a little bit more of the writing than stuff that they have. The only bummer and everything of the 2K13 is I don't have the manual. A little disappointing. Um, next, I would I'm going to show is the digital version of MLB the Show 14. 
Don't you see it? It looks great. So awesome. Um, I didn't have 2K. I didn't have MLB 12 for show. I thought I have MLB 12 of the show. I guess I don't have. I guess I have a digital version of MLB 12 of the show too. Um, yeah, 12 and 13 might be digital as well for the show, but because I'm sure I have it. Um, I didn't check. I know. I know. I have. I know. I have 14 on the PS4. Um, 13 and 12 might be on the PS3 digitally. Um, if I have them and everything, I'll add them to this list. Um, but just so you know, this list is rather huge now. Um, we're at 90, we have 96 games. Um, so it's, that will be 15. And we'll be 16. And we'll be 17. I mean, just like it's really cool and everything. It's like they have, um, like they look like it looks like a player's uniform and everything for Ken Griffey Jr. It was just kind of cool. It's like, and it's like, and we'll be the show 18. Like I say, you don't. We don't get the artwork and stuff and everything from from an the actual game, but it's just cool. Looks like a locker. And then last year's MLB the Show 19. And basically, what they're throwing at you is a bunch of stubs and other stuff and everything to to get you to buy this stuff. Plus a classic state, an extra classic stadium, which I feel that they should include anyway. But it is what it is. It's, they they know how to market and sell their game. But anyway, so that is all coming. And oh my goodness, I never mentioned when. When will this start? You might be asking that. It's January. The game, the new game comes out in March. When are we going to start this series? We got to have this series. The series starts on January 31st, 2020. So very soon, we will be making this series. We will be posting videos, at least two a day. So you can look forward to it, seeing it then. But until then, please give me comments. Tell me what teams you want to see, what stadiums you want to see. Um, and basically, I really look forward to your comments and your input. Um, but until then, this is David B. 69 and I'm out.